The tribe was a Mandalorian group that operated in the years after the Galactic Empire was overthrown. The group also included Paz Vizsla, a female Mandalorian armorer and a bounty hunter Din Djarin, also referred to as the Mandalorian or just Mando. Children and adults made up the remainder of the tribe. To reduce the risk of being found, tribe members were only permitted one member to be outside the covert at any time. The tribe belonged to the Children of the Watch, which Bo-Katan Craze claimed to be a sect that adhered to the unquitted way of the Mandalore and had split out of the rest of the Mandalorian culture. Among other rules, this practice prevented participants from taking off their helmet in front of other people. The Children of the Watch, who were sequestered on Concordia, managed to survive the Great Purge of Mandalore by the Galactic Empire. The tribe retreated to clandestine on Navarro after the purge, allowing only one member to leave the enclave at any time for fear of jeopardising the group's concealment. Din Djarin, a bounty hunter, visited the Mandalorian armourer of the tribe, also known as the armourer, inside the enclave about 9 ABY, and gave him an ingot of Beska from preliminary bounty payment, enough to make a pauldron. For Foundlands, the surplus metal was set aside. Jarin subsequently returned to the tribe with a contorno of Baska, enough to manufacture a full new crass of armour, after delivering Gorgu to the enigmatic Patreon. The tribe members entered the armourer's quarters slowly after observing the significant amount of Beska that Jarin was in possession of. They considered Jarin to be a traitor because of his compliance with imperial demands. One of them, Paz Vizsla, criticised him for doing business with the surviving members of the Empire and tried to humiliate him by taking off his helmet. After a fight broke out between the two warriors, the armourer broke it up and reminded the tribe that they had to follow the way of Mandalore, which required them to survive at all costs. The tribe unanimously responded, This is the way. The tribe broke his cord out of secrecy and came in force to support the comrades in arms giving Jarin the chance to flee with Grogu after he was attacked by the Bounty Hunters Guild members for refusing to give up Grogu. Jarin immediately escaped in the spaceship, the Razor Crest, during the subsequent combat, remarking that the tribe will have to find a new hideaway in order to maintain incognito following the clan's attack. As the Bounty Hunter exited the area, Vizsla gave him a salute, reiterating the tribe's loyalty to one of their own. The Bounty Hunters Guild lost control of Navarro after the conflict, and the remaining Imperial forces punished the Mandalorian settlement for its involvement in the tragedy. As the remaining forces attacked the secret base, many Mandalorians were slaughtered. The armor for the tribe survived the assault and hoped that a few Mandalorians had been able to leave the planet. She stayed behind to try and preserve what she could in the Enclave. Jaren eventually had to retreat to the Enclave when he returned to Navarro where he discovered the armour and helmets of his slain siblings and sisters. After explaining what had happened, the armour gave Grogu a new assignment, to find his own people. Stormtroopers arrived in the enclave to look for Jarin after he and his allies had fled. The armour battled them and killed many of them. Even the armour eventually entirely gave up on a covert. Paz Vizsla and the armour took shelter in a new covert on the ringed space station Glavis Ringworld. Down Glavis, Kolzok, Ali, they posted markers directing people to the new covert that could be seen through a Mandalorian's helmet vision settings. Jarin was able to locate the clues and enter the covert. Only the three of them managed to survive the attack by the remainder. Vizsla informed after he arrived. The Mandalorian Vizsla set up a new forge for the armourer after she received confirmation that Jarin had successfully completed his mission by bringing Grogu back to the Jedi. She then welcomed him back into the covert. The armourer noticed Jarin's Beska spear and said it was too dangerous for the Mandalorians because it could puncture Beska armour. She was asked by Jarin to transform the sphere into armour for Grogu. Afterwards, Jarin received instruction with the dark saber from the armorer, who reprimanded the Mandalorian for his lack of concentration when using the weapon. While observing the session, Vizsla, who was longing for the dark saber that had descended from his family, approached the two and challenged Jarin to a duel for the weapon. 
Jaren agreed, and the two got ready for battle by taking off their jetpacks. While his opponent turned on the Darksaber, Vizsla pulled out his Vibroblade and activated his own combat shield. The armorer asked if any of them had taken off their helmets after Jarin had prevailed in the duel, and was about to kill Vizsla when he was prevented. Jarin reluctantly acknowledged that he had, but Vizsla insisted that he hadn't. The Mandalorian was instructed to part by Vizsla, who referred to him as an apostate of the Mandalore way. The disgraced Mandalorian was informed by the armorer that the only place to atone for his wrongdoings was in the live waters underneath Mandalore's mines, which Jarin thought had been destroyed. Jarin then departed, carrying the Darksaber. Tribe adhered to the Children of the Watch's traditional customs, which other members of the Mandalorian society, such as Lady Bo-Katan Kreis, and her resistance derided as a sect of the fanatical believers. As part of the ancient way of Mandalore, when a cult member reaches adulthood, they made an oath to the Mandalorian creed and were told not to take off their helmets in the sight of another living thing, unless they found atonement in the living waters under the mines of Mandalore. Those who did disclose their faces could not put their helmets back on and could be shunned as apostates no longer being regarded by the tribe as Mandalorians. Foundlings might be adopted by the members, who could decide whether to keep them as Mandalorians and have them swear to the creed when they could reach adulthood or return them to their own species. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Until the next time, on Star Wars Invader.